Hello guys, welcome to your third Ruby and Rails tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining the MVC pattern. And I'm going to be assuming that you haven't had any experience with any web web framework. And um, so yeah, we're going to start from scratch. Uh, what the MVC is, is it's a design pattern, like I said. And what it's used for is for separation of concerns. And when you write an application for the web or if, you know or a desktop application, it becomes real difficult if you have a bunch of files and you know, you have no structure. The MVC solves that problem by giving us structure. So and the controller is gonna be like the brain. When we go to a web page, the first thing we're gonna reach is a controller. Now the controller, since it's gonna be like the decision maker is gonna say, you know, okay, do I want information to retrieve from a database? Or do I just wanna render a web page? You know, the HTML and the JavaScript and all this stuff. And that's just a big description, but I'm going to show you in detail once we create the project. So let's open up Aptana Studio and create a, a basic project. Okay, so I'm in the W folder here. Uh, let's generate a new project with the Rails command. So Rails new, and I'm going to call it blog and, you know, dash D MySQL. The name that you give the project in real life is important because in the background, Ruby on Rails is going to do a lot of work for us. It's going to generate all those files, and it's going to put blog as the name of it. So it's important what you name it. Okay, so just press enter. Now I'm going to be describing the structure of the folders in a little while, maybe in the next tutorial. I'm going to explain just a little bit right now. So let's access the, f the project. Just go to Rails and type in blog and hit enter. So here's our project. And one thing that Rails does automatically is if we go to our database here, um, where is it? Our config databases.yml, it actually breaks it down into three development environments. Our development, which is our, you know, the ones that we're going to be using, it. the test, where you want to test some of, some of the files, you know, and the production, when you're going to release your, your website to, to the public. So since we're going to be using the development environment, uh, Rails by default actually is kind of stubborn and it wants us to create this database automatically. So if you have PHP my admin, you could create it there. But I have something called Navicad. It's a great project. I mean a program, and I already have it configured. So I don't know if you want to use Navicad or MySQL um, or PHP my admin, but you have to create a database. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just, you know, I have the connection already installed here. So hit WAMP. And I'm going to create a new database. So remember that we want to name it um, the same thing here. So blog development. So just copy this guy right here. Paste and hit OK. And that's it. Just close it. The next thing we want to do is go over to routes. And by default, Ruby on Rails doesn't seem to fall back on this MBC pattern um, with respect to routes. So we'll, what we want to do is uncomment the the line so we get that you know that little design pattern. So let's go here and let's get rid of this comment here and hit space here, save it, and leave this open for now. Okay, so. Like I said, I'm going to be explaining the, the easy way out right now, the first one, and then I'm going to be explaining the, the database. So we're going to be creating our controller and then a view. The way we do it is we're going to generate a controller and a view at the same time. So we're going to be using the Rails command. To do that, we're going to go to blog and open a command line there. So right now we're in the root directory of blog. You could CD your way in there, you know, change directories if you want to. And we're going to use Rails generate generate controller. We're going to say example. So this is the name of the controller. And then once we hit space, we could use, we could name, um, you know, any, any view. So I'm just going to create a regular one called index and hit enter. So we're going to generate a controller named example and a view 
called index. So in here, under apps, we have controllers, our models, and our views. Right now, I'm going to be working with controllers and views. So if you go to controllers and open views, we see that this command generated app controller example controller rb so app is here controllers and then example controller so this is the file that i got created with the command and it also created app view example so it created this here this file here and also this folder so let's open up here so this is all i created you know again it didn't create anything special you could have just as easily right click here and create a new file and a new folder but you know just running this command allows us to type in less code and allow it to break it you know so it won't break I mean alright so one thing I forgot to mention is that all these rails commands that we've been running so rails if you hit rails these are all the commands that get um, that you could use so we we ran the the generate command right now and this rails command is actually a little pro a little program and it's here so it's script this is the little program that we've been running and you know we're going to be talking about that later on so back to the NBC pattern um, you know we're going to try to access the controller first so let's run our web server if you remember correctly it's going to be webrec and rails um, browse server so let's go here and run right on in the www folder I'm going to change directories to um, to the block so I have two block terminals open so I have two right now so blog and block this is just for convenience because later on we're going to be using this one so in here I'm going to say rails server so this is going to open up webrick and allows us to access it also you want to open up um, WAMP if you haven't opened it up so we could access MySQL once it's green we should be good alright so let's go to our browser oh not this one okay Mozilla and let's go to localhost 3000 now here's where the NBC pattern comes in so right now we're in this stage right here the browser and we're gonna be making a request and the way we make a request is you know through the URL obviously and then we're going to be going over here to routes and this is why we um, we uncommended this line because we're going to be using this command now notice here it says controller action ID the controller is the very first thing we're going to access so if whatever you know whatever name I type in here it's going to be the name that the controller that we're going to be accessing so in this case it's going to be uh, we're going to be using obviously the controller that we generated which is called example and then slash followed by the action I forgot to mention also that in the controllers this here is called the action methods inside controllers are called actions so index is an action so we're gonna be accessing the the, the action index so here's the brain example and here's the view index so we're gonna be showing this view right here once we type that in and then the last thing is just the ID which is the parameters for for the controller but we don't have any right now so don't worry about that and the format we don't have to worry about that either right now so let's just hit enter and we're expecting to get this view right here right so let's hit enter and we have a problem okay I put port 300 it's supposed to be 3000 okay so as we as expected we get this view here so let me go back again and see say what happened so the first thing we did is we made a request and then it got served to the web server which is where you know Ruby on Rails is going to be installed and then it's going to go over to routes now routes is going to determine what you know what um what format is going to it's going to serve so we're going to be using the controller followed by the action and the ID so the controller here and obviously you could have different controllers here I mean different views and I'm gonna show you right now real quick so 
the first thing is a controller and then the action and this action is going to tell us what what view we're going to get in this case it's going to be our index all right so let's create another another um, another action in our controller so we're going to create a new method such so as dev and we're going to call it um demo now there's something hidden here actually it's remember that 